Number one. I personally don't feel like I'm a very good writer, so I apologize in advance if this story feels awkwardly written. I have a few stories that I would love to share, but I want to tell you this story today. I want to start off with the most recent and up to date, the scariest experience of my life. For reference, I'm a 20 year old male who weighs about 200 pounds and I'm six foot. I live in the suburban area of a very large city, which I won't disclose because if I did, it would make it extremely easy to figure out where I live. This experience happened to me about two weeks ago, so I'm still shaken up from it. I worked as a busboy on the weekend at a popular catering hall near where I lived. I had been working there for a little over a month at that point and it was actually my last day working there since I had another job that was offering me more hours with better pay if I was available on the weekends. I had to work at a party that lasted from 7pm up until midnight and I had to stay for almost 2 hours after the party was over to reset the room for the following morning. Around 2 o'clock in the morning, we finished resetting the room and were told we could leave. I was about to walk out of the building when my boss ran over to me and asked if I could help her move a table to the upstairs room real quick, which I did. We placed the table where it needed to go and then we both went back downstairs to leave. We walked outside and said goodnight to each other as she was getting inside an Uber car that she had requested to take her home. Now, due to numerous setbacks in my life, I unfortunately do not have my driver's license yet. The catering hall is only about a 30 to 40 minute walk from our house and I don't mind walking, but during my time working there, my parents were nice enough to drive me to and from work. My mum told me to call her when I got out of work and she would give me a ride as she didn't want me walking home by myself that late at night. I gave her a call and her phone immediately went to voicemail indicating that it was off. I tried again and the same thing happened. I thought to myself that she must have fallen asleep on the couch and forgot to put her phone on the charger so it must have died. She does this very often at night. I called my dad hoping that his phone wasn't on silent as it usually is when he goes to sleep. As luck would have it, it must have been since I called his phone a few times and got no answer. Shit, I thought to myself. All my co-workers had left so I couldn't ask anyone I worked with for a ride home and the only bus nearby that would cut my walking trip in half stops running at midnight so I couldn't take the bus home either. I also didn't call an Uber since I forgot my debit card and only had two singles on me. It looks like I had to say fuck it and walk home instead. To give some perspective, the catering hall was located in between a service road that runs along a major highway and a street road along the coast side. In order to get home, I had to walk down the service road for about 10 minutes until it hit the aforementioned coast side road, which went underneath the highway and out to the other side. Then I had to walk two more blocks up the road until it hits another street that I'd need to turn right on and walk for another 10 minutes, half of which is spent walking up a hill until I reached the streets that entered the community that I lived in. I began walking and about 5 minutes later, I pass a bar where I see a car idling in the parking lot with only the left headlight shining. The car was a white Toyota Camry if I'm not mistaken and there were two guys in the car smoking a cigarette. I quickly glanced over while passing by and didn't think too much of what I'd seen. The bar closed at 1 in the morning. But I figured there were just two guys driving somewhere who pulled into the parking lot for a quick smoke. I turned onto the main road that runs underneath the highway and was crossing the service road on the other side when I get the sudden urge to look behind me. I quickly look back to see that same car driving down the road that I was walking along. It wasn't exactly pitch black, but it was still relatively dark enough at that point where I might not have recognized the car if both headlights had been shining instead of just the left headlight alone, shining in the dark. It was missing one of the headlights. I continued walking and eventually turned right onto the road with the hill that I mentioned earlier, when they slowed down next to me and the passenger rolled down the window to talk to me. 
The road that I turned onto was darker than the road that I was walking on before, so I wasn't able to make out exactly what either of them looked like. But from what I could make out, they were both probably in their late twenties and were wearing dark clothing. The driver was a white male while the passenger on the other hand was a black male. The passenger rolls down the window and asks what I'm doing walking so late at night, to which I responded that I'm walking home from work. He asked me, Would you like us to give you a ride home? I responded by saying, That's very kind of you, but I'm fine walking home by myself. Thanks for the offer though. He gets visibly annoyed and in a somewhat agitated tone, he said, No nah, man, it's, it's dark and dangerous outside. You should let us drive you. We'll get you home safe and sound. Come on, you can trust us. At this point, the road was empty except for this car containing the two men and myself. I decline once again and dart behind the car and walk across the street. I walk up and turn left into a parking lot of a different community about two blocks from my own that had a chain in front of it, preventing people without the proper key from parking inside the lot. All of a sudden, the driver rolls down his window and screams, Get the fuck back here you fucking bitch. He flips a U-turn and pulls up to the entrance of the parking lot and the passenger jumps out and begins chasing me. The driver peels off, presumably to get to the road on the other side to ambush me. My adrenaline immediately hits me and I begin sprinting away from this crazy man. He yells, We're gonna give you a ride, stop running away from us. I looked back and we had a bit of distance between us. He looked somewhat chubby and probably wasn't expecting me to be able to run so fast since I'm slightly overweight myself. I turn right onto the road and continue sprinting until I hear a car squeal down the road behind me. I look back to see a single headlight in the distance, speeding down the road and the man chasing after me, starting to gain on me now. I start freaking out and run and turn left onto the next road that I reached and began making a break for the park since the area of the park I was running towards was dark and thick with trees so I figured I could lose them in there. As I ran into the park struggling to continue sprinting, as I was losing my breath, I looked back to see the car turn onto the road. The driver stops the car and yells at his friend. Get back in the car, the cops hang out there. They might see us. Leave him, we're getting out of here. The man chasing me then stops and runs back towards the car. He flings the door open and jumps in the car. As soon as he slams the door shut, the driver flips a U-turn, speeds off, turns right onto the road up ahead, and disappeared. The park is extremely large and I remember my parents talking about a good number of drug deals taking place in the park and the police were starting to send officers to patrol the area at night to bust up any drug deals they witnessed and that might have spooked my pursuers. I jogged quickly into the park and hid in the darkness underneath the trees for about 20 minutes just to be sure they were definitely gone and to try and calm myself down as much as I could. I walk through the park towards the exit into the community with my senses on hyper alert to be sure the creeps weren't back and hell, for all I knew, maybe there was another weirdo lurking around who would torment me if they spotted me. I exited the park and ran down the block, made a right onto my street and quickly unlocked my door, went inside and quickly locked it. I woke up close to noon later in the day and I walked into the living room. I said hello to my parents and my mum gets up and hugs me and apologises profusely for falling asleep when she was supposed to pick me up. She said she woke up at around 5 in the morning and freaked out that she had fallen asleep and that something bad might have happened to me. She rushed into my room to see myself sound asleep and was relieved that I got home safe. I didn't say anything about what had happened on my walk home that night as I knew that it would devastate them to hear that they almost lost their own son and that my mum would not be able to live with the guilt that she could have prevented the entire encounter if she had stayed awake to pick me up. Up until this point, I actually haven't told anyone except for a very close friend of mine about this experience. I have no idea what those two guys' intentions with me were once I got into the car, but I know for a fact that they were not good and I don't think I ever want to find out what their intentions were. I'm just glad I'm safe and after sharing this experience with you guys, I hope to move on from it and leave it in the past.
Number two. I'm originally from a state where it's predominantly hot year round, and I'm not a big fan of warm weather. So when winter comes, I like to have my windows open and spend as much time outside as possible. Temperatures average around the 50s, but that's besides the point. It was one of those chilly winter nights. I was about 10 years old, and the only two people home were my two nannies and me. They were at the other side of the house watching TV while I was in my room trying to sleep. It was getting late and was likely around to be 10 p.m., so I decided to take a shower and hop into bed. Everything's fine. I hop out of the shower and get ready for bed. At this point, I should quickly go over the layout of my room. It's rectangular and has two windows facing the front door entrance to my house. From my windows, you can see a walkway to the front door and the path is sort of gated in brick. Basically, you'd have to enter the driveway turn left and walk down a path that leads to my front door. My bed faces one of those two windows and I can see all the way down the path. Both windows have a mesh screen. This is where things get scary. Like I mentioned earlier, I had the window facing my bed open to let the cold air in. My room was well lit, so it's hard to see anything through the window when you're inside. However, as soon as I turned off the light, I see the figure of a man with his face pressed upon the screen. In that moment, I feel his piercing gaze. He's motionless and smiling. He had facial hair that looked as if his whole face was covered in fur, and the hair on his head was the same length. I briefly thought that I was imagining this, and was seeing something that wasn't there because of all the foliage outside my window. I had taken a couple of quick steps towards the window to get a look before I confirmed what I saw was real. And this all happened in a matter of about 10 seconds. I bolted out of my room and towards the room my nannies were in. The hallways in my house are narrow and long, and large windows face the entrance. I didn't dare look out. I reach the room my nannies are in and I tell them what had happened, and they just laugh. To be quite honest, and it was a boy who cried wolf situation. I was always a prankster and a bit imaginative, so it was hard to take me seriously when I was younger. I had to beg them to check with me, and from what I can remember, they took it seriously. We get to my room and no one's there. My window screen is left untouched and the man is gone. I don't think they were totally convinced and neither were my parents. I couldn't sleep in my room for days because of the incident and nothing was done about it. My house didn't even have an alarm system, so there was nothing stopping this person from coming back. I'm still very disappointed in how things were handled, as I had no power over anything. I had no idea how long that guy was out there for, and if he was watching me undress and then dress myself after I showered. I remember how fucked up his smile was. It was menacing. I'm glad that I was not harmed by this man, and that this was his only visit. I stopped opening my windows at night, and I missed the cool winter air. Number 3 Back when I was in the 8th grade, my mum and brother had to venture out to the guitar center to get my brother's guitar fixed. This meant that I was going to be home alone for an hour or two, which I was pretty used to at this point. 13 year old me immediately hops onto Minecraft. I started playing with two of my friends and was talking to them via Skype. It was a sunny day outside, and it was also a school day, so there was nothing to be scared of. After about 30 minutes of playing, I heard a loud bang that came from outside. And it scared me, but I thought nothing of it. It sounded like it came from my backyard, but I assumed it was just my neighbors doing work or something. Now, the room I was in has a sliding glass door and windows all around it. I could not see outside because my mum put the blinds and curtains over every window before she left, just for my safety I guess. I should have gotten up to check out what the noise was, but I was pretty focused on the game. Another loud bang came, and this time I was sure that it was on our house, and this time I was sure that it was inside our house. I asked my friends in a whisper if they heard what I heard, but my mic didn't pick it up. 
then I saw him for the first time. The blinds didn't reach all the way to the floor, so there was about 6 inches of space on the bottom of the sliding glass door that you could see out of. Two black shoes were all I saw. At this point, I'm freaking out. I put down my headset and I'm thinking of what to do. In the midst of me looking at the shoes and figuring out what to do, the window directly behind me smashed, glass going all over me. The sound of it made my heart come out of my body. I quickly turn around and another man is behind the blinds that were still hanging, but I was still able to see him. He had a crowbar and was wearing a black hat. Without thinking, I make a bolt for the front door, not knowing if he was chasing me or not. I should also mention that I had a really bad leg injury from my track meet the previous day, and it was so bad that I could barely walk. I didn't even feel the pain. I quickly threw open the front door and shut it right away without looking back. I ran across the street to my neighbors and climbed and jumped over her fence, still not noticing how bad my leg was hurting. Knocking on her door frantically for about 15 seconds, she came out and I just rushed inside and told her to call 911. The police showed up to my neighbor's house within 10 minutes and I pointed across the street to where my house was. They went through the entire house and through the backyard but there was no one there anymore. The police came back to talk to me and said that they found a partially smashed bathroom window, which was the first noise I heard, and partially smashed sliding glass door, which was the second noise, and of course, the window completely smashed that was behind me. The two guys were never found. The weird thing about the whole thing is why they were breaking into my house in complete daylight, and on a school day as well. My friends who heard the whole thing through my mic heard the crash of the window and some faint noises. The whole event freaked me out for the next month, though I did get a lot of popularity in school. I am going to be a senior this year, and now I am completely over it, thankfully. I even joke about it every now and then.